Hello guys, welcome to Rifle Roast 4. I have the coof of all things, and I promised a lot of members of my community that I would make this video about three months ago. And uh, tonight I was going to sit down and I was going to tell you a beautiful story about how Neil Armstrong went to South America to dig up an underground pyramid with portals and stuff. Uh, that's actually a true story, well mostly. Anyway, I was going to tell that story, but... My voice sucks right now, so I am just going to do a rifle roast. I'm going to go over this. I need to get this done, guys. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with the rifle roast series, basically, uh, what I do is I just go through the guns that my community has submitted to me. Um, I'm not saying I am the leading expert in anything, but I do have very strong opinions, and I want to make sure that our guys and gals out there that they have good guns that work that are effective uh you know we're in the second great depression you know it's really important that we're using our money wisely like this gentleman now i'm well aware that this is not a member of my community's weapon this is an old old internet meme but i'm gonna tell you right now this actually isn't as bad as you would think one we got night vision capability we got an eotech exps3 on top of this gun this immediately makes it a night fighting weapon we've got CQB, right? I mean, it doesn't even have a stock. It's got a really short barrel. It's basically a Mark 18, yet it's shooting 7.62x54R, a very cheap and very affordable 30 caliber round. Uh, we've got, of course, the Mosin's legendary 8-pound trigger. I mean, I don't know what else you could possibly want. I mean, this gun just kind of takes the cake as the most effective CQB weapon. I mean, I don't even know what else. I mean, it can even take interchangeable magazines i mean this thing was so ahead of its time when it came out i think the original mosins that kind of started like this and then you know after world war ii that's when they started converting them to rifles but this is just great i mean you got that clone correct eotech i mean this is just great you got original acrylic writings here probably from the siege of stalingrad so i mean this is basically incredible this is such a top tier weapon this is a tier one operator weapon gbrs group are literally peeing and pooing right now that they don't have this gun so uh, this gun's an absolute 10 out of 10 this is an easy win i recommend that all of you i mean check it out it's even got the clone correct tiger stripes i mean this gun is just unfathomably based i mean it's just unreal the clone accuracy of this weapon especially when compared to the other guns we'll be looking at today so Overall, this gun's a 10 out of 10 as far as, you know, preparedness, emergency preparedness. Uh, I mean, this gun, it kind of covers all bases. So, anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Yeah, okay, well, now with the Obrez out of the way, let's go ahead and get into a gun that's actually uh, quite serious. So, uh, this gentleman has submitted rifles to the roast before. They're always very, very good. So, this is his freaking wife's gun, okay? Now... Listen, me and him are in very different tax brackets. I'm very jealous that someone can say, Oh yeah, I have a wife. My wife has a gun. This gun is legitimately better than so many of our, you know, main guns in our community. What a flex. So let's let's go over this here. That's an Arisaka flashlight. I, I don't freaking know what laser that is, but I know this is an NV compatible rifle because he got his wife night vision goggles as well, which is pretty sick. Uh, he's got a Huxworks 556 can on the front. That's one of the most expensive, best suppressors you can buy. Very low back pressure. I mean, very, very, very cool. I believe, I frick, I get them mixed up all the time. It's either a BCM or B5 grip. I'm not the biggest fan of those, but whatever. He's got a Magpul. I believe, oh, is that the SL stock? Very, very nice. I'm a little rusty. I haven't done this in a while. I uh, got the 20 round Magpul P Mag in there. Those are so freaking aesthetic, guys. I mean, if you're looking for a change of pace uh, in terms of aesthetics for your AR, I'd recommend looking at like 20 round mags. They're still pretty useful because you save on weight, going prone's a lot easier. So it's not like you're totally neutering the effectiveness of your gun. So that's very, very cool, especially, you know, if his wife's shorter, you know, a little smaller, then it makes sense to save weight where you can. So that's a very smart choice. We got an Aero Precision lower receiver something really interesting i've noticed in the ar-15 community and some someone shout out in the comments or spout off i should say in the comments if you've seen this as well i've seen a lot of arrow precision hate in the community lately and i don't understand why i know they had weird policies during covid or whatever and you know whatever i don't know if i care enough to like not buy their lowers again this is a really great lower this is their m4e1 lower very very nice um 
yeah, I don't know why everyone hates it. They call it, like on Reddit, they call this the Scarlet Ladder, but got some pretty legit uh, backup iron sights up here. I can't even tell what they are. I feel like such a freaking scrub. I don't know what they are, but they clearly are metal and they look really, really nice. So uh, I'm familiar with Midwest Industries. I'm familiar with their backup sights. I'm familiar with Magpoles. I'm not familiar with what these are, which means they're probably um, really nice and kind of expensive. Obviously, we got a Scalar Works mount and I thought this was an Aimpoint T2, but I don't think the Aimpoint T2 has a push button control. So I think this is a variety of Hollow Sun of some kind. Uh, I'm sure someone's going to be like, you freaking idiot, that is an Aimpoint T2. I thought an Aimpoint T2 had the real stat reel, so I'm not sure why um, it's got push button controls, but assuming this is a hollow sun red dot, um, it, either way, I mean, that's a great choice for this. It's just something very simple. Um, I'm actually planning on building my wife an AR-15 at some point in the near future, and it's going to mimic this in a lot of ways. I think a red dot on a nice high mount, just making it as easy to use as possible. We're not optimizing for anything other than just ease of use, and this rifle is, I mean, it's, even though it's equipped for night vision, it's just ease of use in mind. Uh, I kind of like how the upper receiver is tan. I like the way it looks. My wife has very big opinions on what her AR-15 is going to look like, so I I imagine there were some similar conversations here. I really like it. It's almost like a rose gold looking kind of uh, FDE up here. It's really cool. And I think this is a BCM M-Lock rail again, so I'm going to correct me if I'm wrong, but that's a great choice. I mean, this is just a neat rifle, man. I mean, this is just so neat. It's so useful, and it's great. It's a great rifle to give to, to, give to your woman and say, hey, you know, here's this. Just put the red dot in the bad guy and pull the trigger. You know, I think that's great. So very, very good job. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So there's a common theme on this YouTube series where people submit their guns and there's nothing even necessarily wrong with the gun. It's just not done. And that's what we're looking at here. Um, so I don't remember who this is, or excuse, I don't remember. You can tell it's late at night. I don't remember who this is, but um, it's a pretty basic AR. We got the Magpul carbine, carbine length handguard, which is nice. I mean, that's good furniture. It's good furniture. It's just really, really basic. You got the MOE stock. The MOE stock's kind of mid, but whatever. I mean, that's that's fine. It's not bad. You got the MOE grip again. Not bad, but whatever. It looks like we have a polished trigger in here. So almost certainly OEM'd by Schmid. Schmid makes the most underrated trigger in the industry. And if you actually get a, I think it's nickel boron is what it is. If you get a nickel boron coated trigger from any company, whether it's PSA, Aero Precision, BCM, Sons of Liberty Gunworks, it's literally just a repackaged Schmidt trigger. You can buy a Schmidt trigger from ArfTac for like 30 bucks. Uh, like literally, like they're so cheap. So if you're looking for a trigger upgrade, I think that is so great. It's like just, it's just better than mil spec, you know? And that's kind of how I like my triggers. So an above average trigger, generic furniture, this red dot's interesting. So this red dot, I believe, again, don't quote me here, it's from North Tac. North Tac's kind of interesting. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the YouTuber Vintage Warfare. Uh, he actually works for him. He did a whole YouTube video about it, how he quality tests these red dots. So these are red dots that go anywhere from like 100 to 90 to 80 to even 70 bucks. Very, very, very cheap. They do have a very noticeable refresh flicker on the lower settings of these red dots. Other than that, though, they seem relatively durable, especially for the price. So should it be this gentleman's main optic? No. If you're only going to have one AR, which I'm just assuming this is his one AR, he needs to get rid of that. He needs to replace that with either a SIG Romeo 5, maybe a primary arms prism, a vortex prism. Uh, Palmetto State Armory has the vortex 5X for 200 bucks, which makes it the best optic dollar for dollar in the industry right now. Uh, that's what he should put on this. I think a red dot, you're going to run into a lot of problems where a red dot, it might not be as good as you think because there are so many buried environments where you might need your AR-15, right? Like, look at the 2020 riots. Look at the uh, LA riots, right? There were engagements happening at punching distance and there were engagements happening at 300 yards. And that's why I'm such a big proponent of like prisms, of red dots, magnifiers, even LPVOs. Uh, red dots just aren't going to cut it. Sure, you can absolutely shoot accurately at 300 yards with a red dot. I'm not disputing that. 
but can you get a good target ID? Can you figure out what gun he's shooting at you with? Like a prism optic, like even in a little ACOG or something like that, it's gonna provide you with a lot of information. And so having a big bulky red, red dot like this, I'm not even necessarily saying the optic's bad, but if you're just gonna have a red dot, you should get a nicer one. And honestly, if you're only gonna have one AR, it needs to have a versatile sighting system. So whether that's a red dot magnifier, prism optic, prism optic with a red dot or an LPVO, I definitely recommend one of those three options, especially if you're just going to have one. And as I said, this gun isn't even necessarily bad. It's just not done. It needs a sling. It needs a light and it needs a paint job. After that, it, it's okay, you know, and like if he just has the red dot, that's fine. I mean, if that's all you can afford, that's fine. Just stick with it, whatever. Get good with it. Get a prism or LPVO later when you can afford it. So overall, not a bad gun. Uh, certainly not breaking uh, any what's the term glass ceilings so for those of you who have watched this series before you might recognize this rifle we've actually gone over this rifle relatively recently however you'll notice some new parts so one is the magpul sl stock that might be the storage version unless i'm a total idiot uh if it's the storage version that's kind of neat good job very cool uh now we've got a new optic on here this is the new primary arms 5x prism um, this gentleman, I believe, is renamed Flatlander Gear. Very, very great YouTuber. Me and him have actually, I actually went on his podcast. So if you'd like to hear a schizo saint that doesn't have COVID talk, go watch those podcasts. They're very entertaining, at least in my opinion. Now, this Primary Arms 5X, it's got some things about it that I like, but there's some things about it that... I don't know, might, I don't, I don't know enough about it to give it like my recommendation or not. So far, seems things seem pretty good with this optic. Um, I will say it is lighter than the Vortex 5X, which is my true love, you know, so that's kind of cool. I've heard really bad things about the mount though. So maybe if you get an aftermarket mount, this might be one of the best all around optics you can get for an AR-15. Uh, on top, he's got his pistol red dot. I believe that's a Holosan uh, 407C, I believe. Uh, so very good choice there, and and we've went over this rifle before, so I won't take too long. But we've got really really good thoughtful, you know. There's been some thought put into this gun. We've got this uh, cap for the flashlight, which I definitely need to get one for my Surefire. Um, really, that's so important. I mean, if you spray paint your gun, and then you just have that big reflective lens of your flashlight on the front of your gun, it's almost like it was for nothing. So I definitely need to get a cap. I really don't like these angled foregrips. I've never been a fan of them. It's completely personal preference. It's whatever works for you. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of odd. Um, he's got, I believe it's an LS321, I think, uh, if, I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. Pretty great. Uh, I know he has a sling for this. It's just not pictured. Overall, this, this is a rifle that is incredibly versatile. You can do a lot of different things with it. And he hasn't, uh, it, it looks relatively lightweight. I mean, maybe the flashlight could be a little smaller, but this is a pretty great gun. This is a very well-balanced gun. Okay, so we'll go over this rifle really, really quick. So this is a 20-inch barreled 8mm Mauser. I used to have a Turkish Mauser. I miss that gun so much. I should not have sold that. We all have guns that we say that about. Uh, this gun, it looks very, very fun. The recoil is probably a little much, but that's okay. Um, the guy who sent this to me actually does a lot of reenactments, and he loves using this. Having a little carbine-length military surplus rifle like this, I, it's so much fun. And on top of that, you get a lot of pragmatic uh, advantages to having a shorter barreled rifle like this. It's going to be easier to tote around in the woods. It's going to be a little lighter. Um, and so as far as an end of the world gun, obviously I hope none of you are planning on running exclusively bolt actions, but as far as bolt actions go, you might as well make them useful, right? And so I really like the short barrel on this. This is just really, really fun. Obviously, as far as an end of the world rifle, this gentleman, I know he's got a bunch of ARs. This is a gun he uses for reenactments, so it's not necessarily a tool right now. It doesn't need to be. Uh, right now, it's just a tool for having fun. So this is definitely very, very cool. Military surplus rifles, you also get the excuse of, you know, writing them off as investments. Um, and that's that's a real legitimate thing. I mean, anyone who bought that crate of Mosins back in like 2010, I mean, they are rolling in cash right now. A Mosin Nagant is going for like three, 400 bucks. Um, it wasn't that long ago they were going for like 100 bucks. And so there is a real argument to be made that 
you know, maybe you're not a financial expert, maybe you're not an investing expert, but maybe you know a lot about guns and you know what guns are valuable because you look at guns every day. So maybe it's worth, you know, if you're looking to invest some cash, maybe invest in a military surplus rifle. Personally, I've been looking at Lee Enfields. Lee Enfield rifles are freaking cool, dude. I love that whole period of British colonialism, the aesthetic of it. It's so fun. And the, uh, the, the Enfield rifle is just so cool. The Martini Henry is super cool. I love that whole era of rifles. So, you know, maybe not an SHTF rifle, but maybe a rifle like this, not only is it super fun to shoot and really cool, and you could use it for hunting, obviously, but it's actually a pretty solid uh, monetary investment. So I don't know, just some thoughts on that, a different kind of prepping, so to speak. So definitely very, very cool. What a great gun. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Okay, I don't think we featured this gun before. So this is really cool. So uh, we've had Blood Diamond ARs on this series before. But this one's a little bit of a different take. It's more Blood Diamond inspired. So we've got a heavy profile barrel, which is hilarious. Now, um, heavy profile barrels, they're not great. They're not the most optimal, so to speak. But man, they're going to retain heat well. They're going to be a lot more comfortable to shoot for longer periods of time. Uh, it's going to be easier to shoot more accurately. Like, for all their disadvantages, let's not forget there are some advantages to a heavy profile barrel. We've got a carbine link carbine length, excuse me, gas system. And so what that means is it's going to be a tad over gassed, I'm guessing. However, if you're in an environment like mine, because I live up here in, uh, in the great white north of Idaho next to Yellowstone, I've actually thought about switching to a carbine length gas system. So I have a little bit more reliability in the cold, just so the gas system has a little bit of more of a kick to fight through the grime and through the freezing cold. So you know, don't don't sleep on carbine length gas systems. I don't think they're necessarily all downsides. You're just going to get a little more recoil on a 5.56 rifle, which is not that big of a deal. I really like the way that he was able to incorporate a weapon light into this build as well by strapping it to the uh, front sight post. Not only does it look really cool, but again, it's practical. I, I love guns like this. I love guns that... You know, there's an artistic flair to him, but this rifle's painted for this environment. This gentleman lives in the southern United States. This rifle's going to fit perfectly between the sagebrush and the sand. Also, look at this, right? Maybe at a glance, and if you're a little blind, you might think this is an Aimpoint Pro like we saw in Blood Diamond. But this is actually a Primary Arms 2.5X Prism. A 2.5X Prism from Primary Arms is a really, really, really great, I'm only going to have one AR optic. It's going to allow you to confidently engage at mid-range, and with a little practice, you can engage confidently at close range, and you're going to be a little bit better at shooting at long range. It's a really great middle ground. Now, Primary Arms doesn't make them anymore, but you can still find them for well under 200 bucks. So if you're like that guy we were talking about earlier, and all you have right now is a red dot, I'd highly recommend looking into that, especially if you're in a poverty tier tax bracket like me. What a great optic. Now, the stock's really cool as well. This is a, I believe it's just called the CAR-15 stock. Very similar to the M4 stock, except it's a little stubbier. So it's kind of cool. I think that's a freaking B5 grip, which is super gay and cringe. So other than that, though, I mean, what a great gun. He's got a sling. I mean, this rifle is completely done and complete. This is a confident gun that, you know, you can hold it while you're watching Blood Diamond and you can feel, you know, confident in that you have, you know, kind of basically successfully re replicated it. And if for whatever horrific reason this is your end of the world rifle, well, you've got a pretty dang good gun. So very, very good. All right, last rifle of the day. Well, I guess pistols. So <laughs> this is not one from my community. This is from Palmetto State Armory's customer reviews, which those are a great place to find really, really great AR-15. So what do we got here? We got a Palmetto State Armory Marauder 300 Blackout Upper on a, I dare I say, I think that might be a polymer lower, just based off what I'm seeing here. I have never seen this lower. It gives off mad, like, 2012 energy. I don't know how else to describe it. What a weird, let's go ahead, zoomy zoom here on this. Yeah, what the frick is going on with this gun, dude? I do not understand. So... We've got a 45 degree safety. There are some pretty major safety issues with safeties like that. I've heard a lot of stories of those disengaging. Not sure I'd recommend this to anybody. He's got a Wilson Combat Grip. Now, Wilson Combat's super funny. They simultaneously make extremely expensive 1911s. 
and really, really cheap AR-15 parts. So that way, you know, I think that's kind of like how they make most of their money, honestly, is their receiver sets. You can get a Wilson Combat AR-15 receiver set for like 80 bucks. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that might actually secretly be how they stay in business because no one my age buys 1911s anymore. Now, let's look at this. He's got a bunch of rubber bands saying 300 blackout. Now, as funny and stupid as this looks, this actually isn't even that bad of an idea. As someone who is about to be a 300 blackout owner, the build's in the works. Don't worry, you guys will see it. Uh, it's you know it's kind of scary the idea that you'd accidentally load a 300 blackout round into a 556. You got to be very very careful with that. Um, that could very easily end in a, you know a dirt nap. So yeah, so as stupid as it looks, it's not even necessarily a bad idea. Could he have gone about it a better way? Absolutely, but you know whatever works, right? This is almost certainly not a real EOTech. This is absolutely a clone. Um, we're just gonna assume it's a clone. I honestly haven't really heard anything bad about him but the reality is is and this is gonna sound so rude but it's true the guys that run clone eotex don't run their guns hard at the range in the woods they don't hike with them right they're not accidentally throwing them against trees and rocks they're not using them to clear brush like like i was literally doing that last week i was literally using my ar-15 to keep you know branches from hitting me you know Things like that are really going to test every component of your AR-15, and you're going to find the weak points really, really quick. And so if this gentleman ran his uh, fake EOTech hard here, you know, slamming it against barricades, things like that, it probably wouldn't last. And so that's just an indicator to me that this gun probably just isn't shot all that much or even just used all that much. Um, the buffer tube is kind of odd looking. It's got like a spiral thing here. And he's got obviously a soft thing in the back. Uh, this is not legal advice, but if you donate to the Firearms Policy Coalition, you can still have a pistol brace. And so that's what I that's what I do. I recommend everyone does that. So now as far as the sling here, uh, I like that he duct taped it actually. So maybe I need to take back what I said and not be so uh, judgmental. Because if you're duct taping your sling... I don't know, that's an indicator that you're like using your gun, you're adjusting it, you're modifying your gear to make it work for you. That's actually really, really cool, so maybe I shouldn't be so rude. Now, as far as the 300 Blackout Marauder upper itself, um, I don't doubt PSA can make a functional gun. I have a 20-inch PSA upper in shipping right now. It should be here within the next few days. I'm really excited for it. I don't doubt PSA can make a functional AR-15. The question is, is the 300 Blackout Marauder upper any good? Now, if you can fit a suppressor under the MOE handguard, that would actually look pretty cool. Right now, the um, the Marauder upper comes with a flash can, right? So, you know, I don't know. Can you replace that with a suppressor pretty easily? I don't think anyone that's buying this, you know, like if you can afford a suppressor, you're probably not buying this upper. You're probably buying a different upper. So, I don't know. It's kind of interesting, right? So I don't know. I'm very interested in this upper. Uh, once I get more YouTube money, I'd actually love to experiment with that myself. Like, because that would actually look pretty cool. Because this handguard, as generic and boring as it is, is a really good handguard. So if you can somehow make this compatible with the suppressor, that'd actually be a pretty slick system. Uh, like sort of a, you know, what's it called? The Dirt Squirrel, as Nine Hole Reviews, Reviews calls it. Just kind of a cheap honey badger. Yeah, that'd be great. Um... Now, here's the deal, right, with this 300 Blackout. A lot of people might say that there's no point to having a 300 Blackout unless you have a suppressor. I actually disagree. I think Supersonic 300 Blackout is more than enough of a reason to get into 300 Blackout. Supersonic 300 Blackout, to my knowledge, is one of the only ways to get an efficient AR-15 that's shorter than 10.5 inches. Everyone knows 10.5 is kind of a hard floor, for AR-15s with chambered in 5.56. It's a hard performance floor. You go any lower than that and you just kind of enter like toy territory. Whereas 7.5 inches for a 300 blackout is actually perfectly reasonable. That's a very efficient barrel length for the 300 blackout cartridge. You're going to have similar ballistics as a Draco, for example. So 
You know, I don't know. I mean, I think this rifle has the potential to be useful. Here's what he needs to change. He needs a pistol brace. He needs to donate to the FPC and put on a pistol brace. He needs to replace this with either, you know, again, a Romeo 5, maybe not even a Prism, right? Because this is a 300 blackout. You know, maybe just get a Romeo 5 and some backup iron sights if you can. Actually, I don't think you can make that work with this handguard, so never mind. Yeah, just get a Romeo 5 and call it good. And then, I don't know, maybe get rid of these rubber bands and then put the 300 blackout on the dust cover. You need to change out this lower for just a freaking... Honestly, an Anderson lower would be miles ahead of whatever the frick this is. Um, the sling, actually, I mean, it, it looks like he's been able to make it work for him, so maybe he should keep it. But as far as the blast can, I don't know, maybe just hang on to it. If he made all those modifications, this would actually be a pretty decent 300 blackout PDW build. That'd actually be pretty slick. Um, obviously, this person's not in my community, so he'll never know I went over this gun. But anyway... Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, this is COVID Schizo Saint talking, so if my voice sounded weird, that's why. Uh, go ahead and leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I would love to see you guys more around here. Please leave a comment. Which gun was the worst? Which gun was the best out of the ones you saw today? Love hearing your guys' feedback. Uh, take it easy and stay tuned for some more serious content from Schizo Saint in the future. Take it easy. Bye-bye.